Okay, well, good evening, everyone online, and good evening, everyone here in the building. It's great to be here on a beautiful Sunday evening, and it's great to have you with us online as well. So just please feel welcome wherever you are. Um, to all our guests that are with us here tonight, we would love to make you feel welcome and comfortable. So um, if you haven't received one already, can you make your way to the coffee shop after the service? Just fill out a Connect card just to get your details, and we would love to bless you with a free cappuccino and just spend some time getting to know you. So I hope you have a great time with us tonight and you really feel blessed. A few, a few notices before we get into some of the, into the word and Godfrey's going to share with us. For the next three months, August, September, October, and we've been doing that now for the last two weeks, Blessing and Joan Keeling are leading a revival prayer initiative. And that's by the crosses outside the church and fountain. And we'd love anyone to come and support us each afternoon. We have from Monday to Friday, where the guys are praying there from 5 to 6, and on Saturday and Sundays from 3 to 4. So please come and join us. Prayer is important. Gardens of Faithfulness Information Evening. It's coming up this Thursday, the 26th of August at 6 p.m. at Fountain, right here in the lounge. If you're interested in how to plant, how to be a part of this new initiative, please come and join us um, and getting to understand what we're wanting to do. We do have a flyer in the foyer if you would love to pick up that and get for more information. And if you just want a little bit more understanding about this, you can contact the office and uh, we can definitely give you more information about that. The Eden Life Center, we've been punting and we've been striving for all of these different things going on. The healing at Eden Life Center is nearly done. It is uh, finished pretty much. We're just putting furniture in. Um, if you don't know, it's where the gray stairs are above and that side of the building on the, on the top. And it's going to be used for counseling and healing center and also for our kids' ministry on Sunday mornings. And we are opening, having an open day, not this Sunday coming, but the next Sunday on the 5th of September. And we've got a few events coming up, so just listen carefully. So we got volleyball, um, and uh, we want teams to get part participating. So if you're a team leader, if you're feeling like you're ready for some volleyball, Get your team together, sign up at the office, click the Google form that we're going to send out this week, and get those teams in. We're looking for eight to ten teams to be part of that volleyball tournament happening in the day. We've got an auction, so we've got paintings, we've got weekends away, we've even got a, a spring buck that has been cut up, minced, uh, ready to be auctioned. The live online auction has actually been open from today, so you can go on our Facebook page and you can click on the link and um, you can see our live auction that's going on already. So you can bid already for that, and you can see which, which the kind of things that you want to be involved in. And we would love you to participate in that. And then we're going to actually have the auction take place outside on the day as well. And we're going to see who gets what. Um, and we're also going to have a picnic for all the families and uh, some, some activities going on. So we want to make it clear that if you don't make it into the building for the 50 number on the day, it doesn't mean that you can't come to the open day. We obviously allowed 100 outside, so we are, we're going to try and figure out how does that look. So don't, don't stay away if you can't make it into the building. You can watch us online, but then you can still join us afterwards for the volleyball. You can join us at a separate location for the picnic and a separate location for the auction. So we can have up to 150 people, essentially, if we can break up these different locations um, on our property. So please come and join us. We want to make it a day for the community, for our church, to come and see the Life Center. It's going to be open. People can come and have a viewing of what it looks like. It's for the people. It's not for us. So come and join. Come and be with us. We really welcome you to be there. Another notice here, Vision and Values Weekend. Our Vision and Values is just, if you want to get to know the bit of the church, what do we do? What do we believe? Do we understand the Bible? What is our vision? What are our values that we actually live by at this church? If you're interested and you want to know more, we go on a weekend away from the 10th to the 12th of September at Reed River, and we go through. The pastors go with us, and uh, we explain exactly what is about Fountain. So I would love you to sign up, contact the office, grab a flyer at the back, um, you can contact one of the pastors. You can speak to me afterwards if you're interested about that. And we would just love you to be with us there. Then also coming up a week after that, on the 16th to the 19th of September, we've got our Vineyard National Conference. And so this is not just for pastors or leaders. It's for the whole church. And it's going to be held here um, at Fountain. And we're more than welcome to come. You can join us online. You can join us in the building for those sessions from the Thursday evening all the way to the Sunday morning. 
And our um, topic theme is looking at healthy church. What does a healthy church look like? We'd love you to join us for that as well. And on that note, uh, for the conference, we're looking for guests uh, between the 12th and the 19th. Obviously, in this season, it's very difficult for people to host and to um, figure out how does that look. So we are desperate for people to open up their homes to host some of our guests that are coming from outside Africa and from different parts of the provinces. Okay, so just before we invite Godfrey up, where is Godfrey? There he is. He hasn't run away. Come up, Godfrey. Uh, just remember to uh, keep your mask on at all times. Let's keep our social distance, especially when we worship, um, when we pray for people. Remember just all the protocols, uh, and we just want to keep everyone safe. So, Godfrey, let's just pray for you. We're going to stretch out your hand. We just want to bless Godfrey and um, just allow the Lord to speak into his life. So, Father, we just thank you for Godfrey. We thank you for the word that you've put on his life and in his heart. We thank you for the passion that he has for you, Lord the passion to see your kingdom come and your will be done. Yes. And we pray for your boldness right now. Mm. We pray for a love for your people and a love for you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm so happy to be here uh, to share the word of God. Um, it's a privilege. Uh, it's not something that I take for granted. Also, to the people that is online, we welcome you as I'm going to share uh, the Word of God on the theme, uh, Connection. Um, I'm going to read uh, a scripture where most people, maybe we have heard about it, maybe someone has preached to you about it, but this, uh, today I'm going to come with that same scripture and try to share what the Lord has given me, what the Lord has put on my heart. Um, let's open John chapter number 4 uh, from verse 9 to 24. We're not going to read all of it, but I'll just read in parts as we, as we continue. Can we put um, those verses, please? I think if you can put from verse, uh, verse 4, 5, and 6. I'll read, I love the New King James Version. It says, but he needed to go through Samaria, so he came to a city of Samaria, uh, which is called Sacha, near the, um, the plot of um, ground that Jacob gave to his uh, son Jacob. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weird, weird from his journey, said thus uh, by the well, it was about the sixth hour, verse 7, a woman from Samaria came to draw uh, water. Jesus said to her, give me um, a drink. Then the woman said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from um, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. Jesus answered and said to her, if you will know the gift of God um, and who it is who says to you, give me uh, a drink, you would have asked him and you would have given you a living water. Uh, I'll start by defining the, 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 the meaning I have uh, put the subtitle under the, the, the theme that we are going through, connection. I said the power of connection. I was just checking the Miriam Dictionary. It says the ability to produce or uh, the ability to act or produce an effect. Um, if we look in the book of John chapter 1, it says those who receive him, he gave them power to be called sons of God, which means we have the power to create things. We have the power to say things to existence. Then connection, it simply means the act of connection uh, to establish communication between people. Uh, if you look Matthew chapter 28, verse uh, 19, Jesus said to the disciples, go ye 
therefore, and make disciples of all nations. In other words, what you are saying, go ye and make connection. Go ye and make uh, communication. Uh, I have put uh, the, the first, um, the connection, the one that I've uh, get it from the dictionary, and the one that I think that we're going to use today, I say the ability to act or produce an effect through the, uh, through the establishment of communication between people. So that's the, 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 the uh, meaning that I, I'm going to, uh, to zero on today. So if uh, from, the past, from the portion of scripture where we have read, we find out that Jesus, he went to Samaria and he was at a well um, the top verses, it says he, uh, his disciples went to go and buy meat. Now, Jesus is there sitting and is waiting to see who is going to come. Now, a woman of Samaria came to draw water from that well. And Jesus said, can you please, me, uh, can you please give me a drink? And the woman says, there is no dealing between a Jew and a Jew. Uh, and the Samaritan. Now, when I was just meditating on that verse, I realized Jesus saying, can you please give me water? She was supposed to say, no, I can't. But she's saying, there's no uh, dealing between a Jew and, uh, and a Samaritan. Now, I, I, when I was just um, thinking about this, the woman, she didn't realize that there is someone who has something special, something that can change her life. Because if you read the whole chapter, it shows that this woman, she was not married. She had so many husbands that she, she had fallen in love with. And the one that she was having at that particular moment, she, uh, she was not married to, to her. And now Jesus said, can you please give us water to drink? The same thing sometimes um, when Christ comes or maybe we are in a situation, he asks you, do you want to be helped or do you want to make whole? We give unnecessary reason. Uh, like a man um, on the well of bedside, Jesus came to him and said, do you want to be made whole? This man, he said, there is no one that can push me into the pool. When uh, the angels... Um, uh, mixing the water, no one will, pu will push me in the, in, the, in the pool. But Jesus is not talking about uh, why didn't you manage to get into the pool or what was the reason of not you getting first into the pool. He said, do you want to be made whole? Like this woman, please, can I have a water to drink? She said, no, there is no dealing between a Jew and a Samaritan. When I was just checking uh, the conversation between the woman and, and, and Jesus, I realized that she didn't recognize that this man can change her life, number one. And number two, she was saying, I am a woman. I can't relate with men. There is no dealing between us. Then thirdly, this lady, she was culture, she, she, she was coming uh, with a perspective of culture. Why? Because what she's saying uh, there is no dealing between, which means it's something that she grew up in. Someone telling her there is no relationship between a Jew and, and a Greek. But now Christ is saying it's no longer about that. It's about water that I'm asking. If you have known that who I am, I would give you the water of the living, uh, the living water. Once you have it, you will not get uh, you will not get thirsty. Uh, allow me tonight to share about three points that I've um, grasped from this, um, from this uh, portion of scripture. The first one, it's learning. The second one, it's prophecy. Then the third one, it's faith. Now, um, when I was checking, the word faith simply means to acquire or gain knowledge or understanding or to come 
to realization. Verse 10, it said, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who, and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would give and he would give you a living water. Now I was just um, checking. I'm someone when, when I read the Bible, I want to uh, visualize or to dramatize and see what was really happening between Jesus and this woman of Samaria. I realized Jesus said to the woman, uh, if you have known the gift of God, you will... Um, you would ask of water. Then the second thing, in other words, he's trying to say, woman, if you have known who I am, if you have known what I have, you were not going to, to have excuses. Or in other words, you were supposed to say, thank you, Jesus, because this day, it's your day which the Lord has remembered you. It's your day whereby it's a divine connection whereby God has remembered you to change your situation, your life that you are living in of changing husbands or of changing men. In fact, it's not good for you. I have come with a living water, which you, once you get it, you will not remain the same. The same thing with us. There's a time sometimes when God comes to us and say, are you willing that... Um, if, 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 if you show vulnerability to me, I will help you. But sometimes we, we don't have the eyes to see the person who's talking to us. Sometimes I was thinking also, there's a time maybe even the word of God is being preached. Sometimes we, we, we try to check and say, who is the person who's giving the word? At the end of the day, we miss what that person is holding, like this woman, he, she is uh, thinking of the cultural thing, a Jew and a Samaritan, but she didn't saw that in him, her life was going to be changed. May the Lord help us. May the Lord give us courage or um, give us the eyes to see what he wants to do in our life because uh, the presence of God um, the presence of Jesus for, for that lady, it was a gift whereby no many people could get such a gift. I was thinking, why is it that um, at the right time, Jesus is there and she is the first person? Because when you check on a well, it's not one person that goes there to draw water. Everyone or many people, many ladies, they go there to fetch waters. But now, She's there, uh, Jesus is there, and she's the first person to head on with Christ. She was supposed to open and say, no, this type of, of encounter, it's not the same. It's not, uh, uh, unlike ourselves, there's a certain presence or there's a certain uh, encounter that we, we face in our life that we shouldn't let it go just like that. I thank God this morning uh, we, we, we were enjoying in the presence of God. And I was saying, God, we thank you because that's what we want. We want to uh, encounter with you. We want to feel your presence. And I realize whenever you encounter God, you will not remain the same. You will, you will, you will be a changed person. Because if you look at the end of the chapter, you see that lady, she was the first who goes and say, come and see Someone who has told me about my life. Someone who has prophesied about what is going um, into my life. Uh, if you check also uh, in, uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 11, verse 28 to, nine, uh, to 29, Jesus said, uh, Come unto me who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn unto me. Uh, Children of God, this is the time that we need to sit down, that we need to meditate in the word of God. This is the time that we need to learn from the word of God. Why? Because there's a lot of information that is walking around. There's a lot of preaching which is not 
true, but the only way that we can go, that we can get the actual truth is to sit on the feet of Jesus, is to meditate on his word. As Matthew 4, uh, verse 4 says, for men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded or that cometh from the mouth of God. That's where we get information. That's where we learn from our God because we are living in a time where there is a deception, where there is a lot of information where people are being uh, having information that brings fear in our hearts. We can't even face our tomorrow, but Christ is saying, come unto me and take my yoke. My yoke is light and learn unto me and I am meek. There are some things whereby uh, maybe someone does something which is wrong whereby you, you don't need to, to, uh, to, to say anything. Just to quiet, just be meek like Jesus when he was on the cross. Some people say, if you are the son of God, can you help us and you help yourself? You would say, he just remained quiet. Why? Because he had the information that this war that I am, it's not a physical war, but it's a spiritual war. The same thing with us as the children of God. We need to learn from God. We need to learn from Jesus. That leads me uh, to my second point, prophecy. Prophecy uh, simply means, I give it this meaning, uh, the way God communicates uh, with his people through different ways. If we check, there are so many ways uh, in which God can communicate to us, can prophesy in our life. But on, according to the context of this text, God was prophesying um, about the present life of this woman. Um, if, we, um, if we check from verse 15, it says, we saw the woman's um, as this, uh, uh, 15 and 16, Jesus asked him, where is your husband? And the, uh, the woman says, uh, I don't have a husband. Then Jesus keep on saying, you have said the truth because even you had five um, men that you were uh, in love with, even the one that you have is... Um, it's not also your husband. Then Jesus, uh, that, sorry, that lady said, uh, are you a prophet? Then the lady said, okay, now I, I, I know that you said the truth or you have prophesied about my life, but there is this thing. Our fathers used to worship uh, on the mountains. You Jews, you used to worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus said, woman, it's not about the place, it's not about where to worship God. The time has come and the time is now. He said the hour is now that those who worship the Lord should worship him in spirit and in truth. If I check also this woman, in other words, she, she was hearing or she get the information about what Jesus was talking about. But there was something which was... Uh, not right, or there was something which was short there, which, uh, which most of us, we are in that challenge. Sometimes we do hear the word of God, but at the end of the day, we, we don't use that um, weapon. At the end of the day, we will not receive uh, what we want from God. I was saying here, in, uh, in this inst instance, Jesus was the prophet who, who was communicating to this woman concerning her present uh, marital, stat marital status. Whenever we get connected with the Father and his spirit, prophecy will definitely come, despite the form in which it can come to us. There is no one who encountered God remained the same. If you check even in the, uh, in the Gospels, whenever Jesus would help people Everyone, let's say someone is crying. Let's say an instance of John chapter 11 of this man called Lazarus. He went to that place. Maria and Marita, they cried and said, Jesus, if you were here, 
our brother was not going to, to die. Jesus said, I have told you I am the resurrection. And this lad said, no, yes, I know that is going to arise uh, on the, for the uh, second coming. Then Jesus said, no, lady, there is something which is short, which um, the, the, the thing that, I, uh, that I'm going to talk last, there is something which is short. Hey, you said if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. But you, uh, there is no difference. Even he had died while I was not there, but I am here. There's no difference because what I was going to do if he was alive and now he's dead, I'm still the same person. I can also make a miracle or I can also perform a miracle. So when we check this lady, she had what Jesus said. She, Jesus prophesied to her, but the problem came. She didn't believe what Jesus said. Most of us, we had so many prophecies. Sometimes someone comes and sometimes you look at the stage of the person or you look what he have or what he have. Then he said, this, if God can do this for me, why, he, why didn't he do it for him? But God is speaking. He can uh, prophesy at any time. He can use anyone, even someone who don't, you, whom you don't, who you don't expect to give you a word. But let God help us to say whenever the word comes to our life, we accept it with our heart and begin to walk with that, with that word, which lead to my. Uh, Last, the last point, which is faith. I, put, I give it this way. Faith, it simply means to have a total confidence, total trust upon someone for help. Um, the previous verse, we saw that the woman received the word which was preached to her by Jesus. But her challenge was that she didn't mix with faith. James said, you don't receive because you ask amis or you don't have faith. This is the greatest weapon that most of us, even myself, when I was um, meditating on this word, I said, God, may you please help me. Because most of us, we do hear a lot of stuff, but I am or we, you are what you are today. It's because you didn't mix with, uh, with faith or you didn't use the faith to, for you to, uh, to grasp from God. I said, faith, it's like a hand. Because why am I saying faith, it's like a hand? If we read Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse um, 6, it says, it is impossible to please God without faith. So faith, it's like when we go to get to, to, to God. It's like we, 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 we put our hands to God to receive whatever we want from, from God. If we look from verse 20, 21 and 23, it says, Jesus said to her, woman, believe the hour is coming when you will uh, neither on this mountain, on this mountain, mountain or in Jerusalem, Worship the Father. Verse 23, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seek, uh, for the Father is seeking such. This is the time where God is, is looking for true worshipers, which means if something there is true uh, when there's comparison, it means there's something which is not true, something which is fake. So, but Jesus is saying to the woman, the time is now where God is looking for true worshipers. I'm, I was thinking with this lockdown, there's a lot of things that has happened and there is a lot of isolation whereby it's no longer church we used to do. But it's an individual thing, like the encounter of this woman. It was not including other Samaritan women, but it was for herself to say, woman, this is the time that you 
yourself, you must worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. Children of God, uh, we don't know what will come. We don't know what uh, this coronavirus could do in our life. Sometimes it will come a time, maybe it's two months, three months, no church is going to be allowed. But and I want to encourage each other that this is the time that we should stand up and worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. It's no longer about my brother. It's no longer about my sister, but it's about you. Because when we look on this context, according to this context, Jesus was one-on-one -on -one with this woman of, of Samaria. Even if you check... In the book of, uh, sorry, in the, in, the, in the Gospels, you find out whenever Jesus could do a miracle, you say your faith has set you free. Let it be done according to your faith, which means faith is a prerequisite for every Christian to have it. So in other words, if we don't have faith, we are like, we are sinning against God. Faith it's a prerequisite as the children of God. We need to use this weapon because that's the greatest weapon which the devil uh, is afraid of. Because when we use faith, we, call, we, we allow God to manifest to his capacity. We allow his presence to be seen in our life. We allow mountains to be leveled. We allow a uh, closed road to be opened. We allow the sick, uh, the sick people to be healed. We allow miracles to happen in our life. So may the Lord uh, richly bless us. As I close, uh, and I would say, as we continue to walk in this uh, heavenly road, we need to keep on looking learning from Christ because he's our author and finisher of our faith. More so, we need to rely on the prophecies which were spoken upon our lives and have faith because these three things will keep us on track since the time that we are living in its evil. May the Lord richly bless us. We want to just stand and have just a moment of prayer to say, God, may you help me as I'm going to continue, the, as I'm continuing this journey of the spirit, God strengthen me. God give me power to keep on going because what the devil is challenging in our life, it's our faith. I was thinking of Jesus after he finished fasting four days and 40 days and 40 nights, the devil come to him and said, if you are the child of God, he was testing to say, you have fasted. If you're still maintaining that faith which you had for the time when you were fasting, can you change this thing? But Jesus said, it is written, why I have learned to my father that men will not live by, uh, by bread alone, but by, the, by every word that cometh from the mouth of God. Can I ask the praise and worship to come and uh, sing for us as we going to minister? Thank you. Thank you, Godfrey. Let's stand as we worship and uh, as we we get into a posture of receiving. Um, if you feel welcome, just put out your hands and let's just allow the Lord to begin to prepare us for, for what he has. And so, as Godfrey was talking about faith, this is an act of faith. We are we were allowing, we're stepping into what the Lord has really planned. And we believe it, not based on how we feel or what we think or what other people have told us, but we believe it based on your word and your truth. And so, Lord, we just welcome you here. We thank you, Father, that you were here before we got here, and you will be here when we leave. And we thank you, Lord, that we're not calling you to come down, but we are allowing you to come out of who you are in us. And so we welcome you now, and we just say, come and have your way. 
Lord, let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Let us begin to stand firm on, on the, the ideas and the revelations and the things we think, and we base it off that, off the truth of what you say. And so we stand in your truth right now, Lord, and we know that you say that you are here, and we know, Lord, that you are the comforter. We know that you are good. We know that you are love. You're not just a loving God. You are love. And I just pray as we come into your presence, as we come into your courts, Lord, let us stand on your truth this evening. That whatever, wherever we're from and whatever we've been and whatever we understand, whatever we think, that we do not base it this evening off our feelings or what we think, but we base it off who you are and what your word says. That we become people of spirit and truth. So come, Holy Spirit, come and do what you want to do, Lord. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. We love you, Lord. And let us look to you tonight. Let us, let us fix our eyes upon you, Father. Let us welcome your presence right now in Jesus' name. Come and have your way. Come and do what you want to do in Jesus' name.
heard this yeah, this picture of the of the three wise men coming to find baby Jesus and just bringing their, their offering. And I'm sure I've shared this before while singing the song, but it just reminds me so much of how when we bring our adoration to the Father, our worship is a gift to Him. And we get to come and lay it at His feet. And He just delights in that. And I think what I love about that is that it shows us an active participants in our worship of our Father. When we get to bring our hearts and our lives and our voices and we get to lay it at the feet of Jesus as a gift and we just get to adore Him.
family. Um, I just wanted to share something tonight, just, just in a time of worship. I just had this impression of a, of a circle and just the feeling that I got, the word that I heard in my heart was the word inclusion. And I just had a sense in my heart that it was almost like the Father was drawing you into the circle and He's saying to you, I see you. I notice you. And then the second scripture that came to my, my heart that I think ties in with this is in Isaiah 43, verse 1, that says, But now, this is, what the, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, He who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. So if that relates to anybody tonight, I just want to encourage you to respond to that message. And um, we'd love to pray with you as we continue with worship. Thanks, guys. Security is a big factor in your life. Um, yeah, you, you you tend to turn to the worldly perspective of what it means to be secure. So whether it is career or security in finances, security in even even to like your house perimeter. You know, being safe is a big um, it's a big thing for you. And I'm not saying that's wrong. But I do feel like the Lord has this word for you. And um, it's in John 10. Um, just The scripture just speaks about God being the good shepherd. Um, and it says, John 10 verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is not hired. He's, not a, he's a hired hand 
and cares nothing for the sheep. So the Lord is the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Um, so yeah, if that yeah, it resonated with anyone, I'll be standing over there. Um, yeah, if it means anything to you and I'll trust the Lord that he has a word for you directly. Um, but yeah, he's our good shepherd and yeah, nothing in this world is going to be our security besides Jesus.
more than we could ever desire you. I'm just reminded of that song. As I come to meet with you, you're there waiting for me. What a, what a beautiful picture that is, that when we think we're coming and we're doing so much to get dressed and to spend our time, to come spend time with the Lord, we realize He's been waiting here all along for us. What a privilege, what an honor it is to serve you, Lord. What an honor it is to know you. Thank you for this gift, Lord. Thank you for this gift of knowing you. I sense for some of us tonight, we've, we've sensed the Lord. We've, we've, we feel like we've heard him. And I just encourage you to, to not let this word and what the Lord has been saying to you to go in vain. But to begin to write it down, begin to listen, begin to take and run with it. I just sense the Lord is wanting to say to a few people tonight that stop doubting, stop overthinking, stop trying to formulate everything and trying to figure out 100%. You, you hear the Lord. You know the Lord, and He wants you to move on. He wants you to take that next step. He wants you to get out of the nappies and begin to walk. He wants you to move you on to bigger, greater things. Thank you, Jesus. So as we wrap it up, as we stand, it's just... Father, will you come and just speak? Will you come and do what you want to do right now? Thank you, Lord. If there's anyone who gets a word, if you've had a picture and you've, you've been stirred and uh, you've been tugging to come and you don't know what to do with it, and we really want to encourage, open the space up for people to, to share and to take risks and to allow the Lord to do what he wants to do. Um, so be free come and grab the mark and we're just going to just spend the next one one or two minutes we're just going to wait wait on the Lord just allow him to speak so come Holy Spirit Godfrey says, when we encounter the Lord, we cannot stay the same. I pray, Lord, that we go out not the same, Lord. We don't leave what you did here. We take it out and we, we give it away freely and boldly. We begin to guide us with what you're saying. We begin to live out, Lord, that we begin to, what we do here, we do in our lives. 
in our lives become a worship to you. We honor you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. Thank you, worship team. Bless you, guys. If you want some prayer, we're going to have a few guys up here. We're more than welcome to pray with you. If you're still soaking, feel free to stay and just listen and rest on what the Lord is doing. The coffee shop is going to be open. You're more than welcome. Please stay, <clears throat> have a coffee, have a chat. Uh, be blessed and have a great week. Amen to the online guys who I thank you for joining us have a great week if you want to contact us please call the office and get in touch with us amen